In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. You're a long way away. <laughs> I'm going to come here to say welcome. And it seems really strange to be saying welcome, but that's what it says here. But I want to say thank you for your wonderful welcome to me this morning as I come to share in worship with you here at St. John's and with you online. It's just a joy to be with you all. Some of you I know reasonably well and to be sharing in worship with you um, is just a huge pleasure. So my name is Jane. Um, I'm the Assistant Director of Formation and Ministry, the grand long title for the diocese. Um, I'm responsible for lay formation. So uh, people like Sandra and Liz and Coral are all my fault. You can speak to me afterwards. But it is lovely to be here with you this morning and thank you for your welcome as we come to explore what a silent witness teaches us in our mission and our ministry. What does a silent witness teach us? Would you like to be seated as the choir are going to sing our first hymn and I've already forgotten what that is. I'm really sorry. God is love. They listen to the choir. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry 
and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 to 15. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise again against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O Shear, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos said to Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from the following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you, and also. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the healing of the sick, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason the, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John 
bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak and may we respond in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. Do please be seated. So the story of the beheading of John the Baptist is gruesome from start to finish. It highlights the consequences, I think, of human weakness, of sexual immorality, of fear, bullying, manipulation, the list could go on and on and on. And we might ask, why is this story included in the gospel? What does it tell us about our faith? How does it point to Jesus? It's a silent witness to such things. Mark, the writer, never ever wastes a word. So we can be sure that this story is significant for all its horror. John is the witness who points to Jesus. He was destined to do so from before his birth, to prepare the way of the Lord and to prepare people to receive the Messiah. He was the baptizer who helped people to be right with God who was the forerunner of faith that changed the lives of Jews and of Gentiles. John points to Jesus, so much so that Mark records that Jesus' ministry begins at the point of John's arrest in chapter 1. In contrast, we see Herod and Herodias doing all that they can to deflect from Jesus and to silence John. Herodias, because she has been caught up with the truth about her relationship with Herod, who divorced his wife to marry her. She had been married to Philip, who was Herod's half-brother, and this arrangement caused political unrest between the two areas that they governed, ending in war. Herod, in his weakness, is conflicted by an interest in Jesus, yet captured by the power of his wife. There are no prizes, I think, for who was metaphorically wearing the trousers in that household. Herod rules Galilee and the surrounding area. He'd heard of the disciples' first mission experience. That's the bit that just comes before 
this reading we've heard this morning. They're putting into practice all that they've seen and heard of Jesus. They're casting out demons. They're healing people. They're bringing good news. They're transformational. And Herod is scared. This could lead to revolt. And he's scared because of his guilt at what he has caused to happen. Surely John has come back to haunt him. It has a bit of a feel of Macbeth, doesn't it, about it? So let's take a closer look. Herod's birthday party would have been an all-male, raunchy affair with lots and lots of really good food and plenty of wine. By the time Herodias' daughter, sometimes called Salome, comes in to dance, those guests, those men, would have been watching every single move. Nothing was left to the imagination. Artists have demonstrated that in graphic reality. But the reality is, she was probably about 12. A child dancing in that way. What kind of mother willingly allows her daughter into such a compromising position which would have ruined her reputation? The story illustrates, doesn't it, the consequences of a life lived without the truth of God's guiding justice and love. Everything in the story points to to a disordered lifestyle, disordered family relationships, disordered political relationships, stemming from a weak leader who has no guiding principles of his own and so is pulled in the direction of others. Either side of the story, Mark records an ordered ministry, the disciples on mission and then Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus speaks and demonstrates hope, justice and deep compassion through himself and through those who follow him. The contrast couldn't be greater. So what of us? I guess we don't have to think very hard to realise some of those dysfunctions in our own society today. They are loud and clear. But what of that silent witness? What of the witness of John, who in his prison cell and in his death still spoke truth to Herod, an uncomfortable truth, but a truth nonetheless? How does John help us to point to Jesus so that what because that is what we are called to do, so that in our words and in our actions, we too can have the courage, even in silence, albeit that might be uncomfortable. John did that by speaking out against abusive and damaging family relationships. John did that by pointing to the truth, speaking out against political power used for personal gain. John pointed to Jesus by recognizing his presence and proclaiming him as Lord. John pointed to Jesus despite the cost to his own ministry. We may not be called to death in the way that John was, but plenty of Christians in our world are. And they, like John, still point to Jesus, even as silent witnesses. John pointed to Jesus so powerfully that Herod thought Jesus was John, resurrected, come back to haunt him. John never stopped pointing to Jesus. 
through his words and through his actions and ultimately through his silent witness of death. It was deeply significant. It's in our Gospels. We're hearing it today, however uncomfortable a story it might be. For that story is good news in as much as it still points to God's love, God's justice, and God's compassion for the whole world. A story of hope. It challenges us in our witness, in our time, in our places, to carry those same truths, to be a witness, to point to Jesus. John points to Jesus, the source of all life. May our words and our actions do the same. Amen. So let us stand and declare together our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us sit or kneel to pray. We praise you today and always, and we thank you for being God, the living Father. Heavenly Father, we pray to you today for the world that your word will have free passage in the countries of the world, bringing those yet to know your love and drawing them into Christ Jesus in salvation. We pray that your grace, O oh Father, will translate them from darkness into the light. Take a moment to pray for ourselves. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our we pray for the church. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church, for our bish Archbishop, for our bishops, for our priests, Kathy and Ali, and Jane, who has come to do our service today and our leadership teams. We cast our burden upon you, O Lord, and you sustain us. We pray for all in authority who face difficult decisions that affect the lives of many. 
Grant them wisdom and courage. We pray for both All Saints and St. John's Church, who long to praise you throughout this strange and confusing time. Through your creative spirit, fire our imaginations to proclaim your unchanging love. Let our mission ring true in the community and continue to reach the needs of others. We pray for our earthly church to be a mirror of your church in the hev heavenly realm. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the world. Eternal God, you are near to the brokenhearted. O oh Lord, you saved the crushed in spirit. We pray for all who are anxious about loved ones, friends and neighbours. Enable them to trust in you and be steadfast in hope. We pray for those who feel isolated or alone, that they may experience your loving presence. Lord, you raise the poor and lift the needy. We pray that you would inspire those who are strong to care for the vulnerable and to serve them in love. We pray for all those facing financial hardship, that you would support and sustain them. We also remember those who seek to fulfill Christ's command to love one another through the work of food banks and charities and through simple acts of kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we pray for the, gold, the global crises of the world, the triple threat of conflict, climate change and COVID. We pray for the countries being threatened by famine and those in war-torn countries. We pray for Haiti who have recently suffered the loss of their president. We pray for the churches in Can Canada under attack of arson. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. We pray for those pol policy makers, government leaders, and concerned citizens around the world who look into the cost of neglecting humanitarian crises, which need immediate attention. We pray for the children worldwide affected by these threats in the third world and the Western world. Take a moment to pray for the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. We pray, our loved ones, that you may bless them and bring them peace beyond understanding. We pray for those who are suffering in, your, in you and hope that you give them compassion and grant them strength and healing. Lord, in your mercy. We especially pray for those who have requested to be put before you today. Anne Armstrong, Mary Tragheim, Jane and Lord Laura Peachy, Sandra and the Marshall family, Henry, Mum Laura and family, Gillian Watkins, Rose, Billy and Skylar Francis, Catherine and the Allen family, Ken Peterson, Anne Dempsey, Rita Benwell, Logo Rathgarnan, James Brokenshire, Shirley Haynes, Janice Samuel, Lauren Florence, Denise Houston, Laurie Downham, Keith Hulks, Millie Sharratt, Beatrix Danzi, Rachel Metham, Jason Middleton, Jean Winch, Pauline Dancy, Nick Lynn and the Wells family, Mal Denny, Teddy, Hannah and Kingsley Hamilton. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the grieving, O oh God. We pray for those who weep and mourn, that they might find comfort and hope in you. We pray for the recently departed Maylene Smith. And we remember those gone but not forgotten and still in our hearts. Joan Evans, Margaret Cobbs. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, in this time of crisis for our families and communities and our world at large, we turn to you in faith to seek your guidance and receive your blessings, knowing that nothing in all creation can separate us 
from your love, made known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask this in the name of him who took our infirmities and bore our diseases, who suffered the cross and rose again in triumph. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Every one God world without end. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. like to stand. When Jesus promised peace, he didn't promise a comfortable peace. He promised a lasting peace in his presence. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is our great high priest who has loosed from us from our sin and made us to be a royal priesthood to you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we praise your glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Hosanna in the highest. 
In the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sin of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same way, night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you, through him, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sin and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sin to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this the beauty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences and fill us and all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share 
in one breath. Shed for us all. Amen.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now, as Cathy would say, please make yourselves comfortable because there's quite a lot to come. Um, <clears throat> first of all, may I give a belated welcome to Jane Winter and thank her very much for coming here to hold the fort. Um, I'm sure that I speak on behalf of all of us to say how pleased we are to see her with us and have her with us sharing our worship. And then <clears throat> the next thing is the good news of some bands. Uh, I have published the bands of marriage between Alex James van der Merwe and Laura Louise Pett, both of this parish, who are going to be married at St. Peter's West Furl in East Sussex on the 28th of August. And uh, this is for the second time of asking uh, for Joey Charlie Hosier and Liddy May O'Neill, again, both of this parish, and they're going to be married on the same day at St. Peter and St. Paul Pease Marsh in East Sussex. And this is for the first time of asking and for John Elliston and Elaine Turner, both of this parish, and who are going to be married here on the 21st of August. And this is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason why these people shouldn't be married, please let Kathy know. <laughs> and we'll pray for them and for all couples who are getting married this month. Lord, the source of all true love, we pray for these couples. Grant them joy of heart, seriousness of mind, and reverence of spirit, that as they enter into marriage, they may be strengthened and guided by you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now some not quite such good news. Um, the archdeacon, uh, Paul, Paul Wright, who was here with us only a fortnight ago, has announced that he will be retiring next March. So that's a bit sad. Um, and I expect he's feeling a bit sad about it too, so pray for him as he gets ready for his retirement. And now um, the serious notices for the parish. Um, yes, Liz would like me to remind you that tomorrow, Monday, at 4.30 in the church, there's going to be a training session on hygiene for the kitchen. Um, it's just that now that we're having this place of welcome um, and, and using the kitchen for the community, we've got to comply with all sorts of rules, sensible rules about hygiene, but uh, anyone who's going to be using the kitchen might like to, to come, and if you can tell Liz, uh, she'll have your, your name on the list. And then also she is going to be dealing with the Bible study on Thursday on Zoom. Um, that is starting again, and I think, I think, Liz, it's going to be on the Psalms, and you're doing the first one on Psalm 19. So um, perhaps tell Liz today, because um, she, she'll pass on the message to Kathy. And, um, and then Yvonne has asked me to um, give out a notice because next Sunday she's organizing a lunch, uh, 18th of July, yes, that's right, that's next Sunday. And um, I can't pronounce, Yvonne here, yes. Um, how, do we, how do you pronounce the restaurant? Viralis, I see, right. So that's where the, re the meal's going to be. Um, let Yvonne know today, please, if you'd like to come so that she can confirm the numbers to the restaurant. And, and then I'm sure Anthony would like me to say that, weather permitting, there's going to be a gardening session next Saturday morning from 10 till 12 in the churchyard. The, um, the council contractors have strimmed it now right down to the bottom, so we need to do some tidying up. So please come if you can. I think that's all. Have I left anything out? No, I think that's all. So thank you. So come to the final hymn. final hymn reminds us of God's presence with us throughout 
our life in all its ups and downs, we point to Jesus. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Would you like to stand for the blessing? We have met in the name of God, who is Father. We have worshipped around the table of his Son, Jesus Christ. We have been fed through his Holy Spirit, that we might be witnesses in the world. So may God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, pour his blessing upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. To love and serve the Lord in the the name name of of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
God bless everyone. Bye-bye.